and being bold uh, of these women, we would have not achieved what we have achieved today if it hadn't been for uh, people who joined our movement, people who ensured that this invisible community got visibility and that to some extent we brought about a change in the lives of these children. So we went on to that extent and that's why it takes a village to raise a child and to you know fight a big issue like exploitation of women. So we all need to get together, we all need to work collectively. Our strength in ending violence against women and children really lies in our collective strength. So appealing to all the young men, and never think, you know, whatever your contribution is too little. When we put all this together, the cumulative impact is tremendous. And we've seen that impact, you know, what kind of an impact when people come together, we can create and we can generate. And please get associated with Prerna. Munavra is there, she can be your focal person and we'll be happy to work together with your college and your students. Thank you so much. I think it's very important that we, not just celebrate a day, but I think somewhere more life according to the message that March 8 gives us all. And as Kiki said, be bold for change. And I think each of us who have made a difference have started with one small step of changing our lives, doing something relevant for our society. And I think that is something all of us can do. And it's not really difficult. So why we celebrate March 8th, I think we need to take what is the pledge that we are taking. In what way are we contributing to the cause of empowerment of women? Is it just a symbolic gesture for us? Or is it, has it a deeper meaning? So I just want to give you this small story of Mathura because of which it started the women's movement in India. <coughs> Mathura was a 16-year-old girl in a rural district of Maharashtra. She was just 16. She was orphaned, she was illiterate, she was tribal, she was poor, and she was working as a maid servant in someone's house. The boy in that house eloped with her. So her brother filed a complaint and she was brought to the police station. When she came to the police station for interrogation, after the interrogation, two policemen who were on duty raped her. Court said, there were no marks of injury on her body. She did not resist. If she had not consented, she would have fought. But that's what we believe in. And Nirbhaya is a classic case for that. You fight, you fight, you fight till you die. This girl was so scared. She was like under 16, around 16. Inside the police station, what will she do? Imagine a 16-year-old girl inside the police station where she's brought and kept there. It's not a little bit. The case was a high court and the high court convicts. And high court gives us a very important legal principle. A quiet acquiescence is not consent. What's the meaning of that? A quiet acquiescence. That out of fear, out of pressure, you're not able to resist then it is not, it is not consent. Consent has to be monitored. Case goes to Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has two decisions, one of conviction, one of equity, based on the same evidence. And Supreme Court must decide now. What does Supreme Court decide? So they said, Mathura is a liar. She has made up this story. She is not a woman of good character. And of course, the policeman. Law teachers, of the Indian Law Institute come across this territory. And they write an open letter to the write an open letter to the Chief Justice to review this case. When that happened, they also publish it, he also publishes it in newspapers. Uh, Professor Upendra Bakshi is one of the force behind it. And when it comes in newspapers, and when people read it, particularly it came as a civil rights issue. Police atrocity, police violation. Women in different political groups or civil rights movement, they feel it could have happened to me. It could be happened to
my daughter. If they can say about this girl who's down in the pits, who's young, who's poor, who's orphaned, she's illiterate, she's not educated, about her, if they can, they don't believe her, how will they believe any of us? So that is how the women's movement starts in India, way back in 1980. And March 8th, 1980, was celebrated as the anti rape law day. Well, the Supreme Court said we can't do anything, you must change the law. So we got a change in the law, and what we got is stringent punishment, seven years minimum uh, for uh, rape, uh, ten years for aggravated rape, etc. What happened is year after year, the number of reported cases, I'm not talking about unreported, reported cases went up. Okay, fine, it went up because of the publicity and you know, more women are reported. Good sign. But conviction rate went down. What does it indicate? That you go, you find a case, at the end of it, you are made into a liar. That is why women don't go and find a case. How can we blame them? So when they are not able to prove, when the police are not able to prove, the girl is rendered liar. And all the time we believe this. The girl must have told lies, it's a false case. Our judges, our police, our society in general, all the time believe that every rape case is a false case. Despite a movement which is predominantly talking about violence against women, all the time asking for law reform, we have a society that doesn't believe in women. We have a society which says that all the foreign media cases are false, all the dowry care cases are false, all the cases whatever women file are false. But at the same time we want more laws, we can't wait for more laws, we are happy when we get the laws. But if I ask you about one right, you don't know. But Preeti said the right of a woman in a police station, whatever she is. Even they did not know. The police have no, the police have no power to abuse a woman, to Teacher did argue to be. But she may be anything. When she comes to the police station, her dignity has to be maintained. When she goes to the court, her dignity has to be maintained. This is not happening in our courts even today. So Marke started with that need that women need to access their rights. Women need to go to court. And there has to be a viable alternative for them. It's not enough to have laws. But it's more important to have someone guiding them towards accessing justice. When a woman is beaten up in a home, she knows she's beaten up. She wants to get out of it. But unless a support structure is there, she cannot get out of it. Unless somebody guides her that these are your rights and I will help you, she cannot approach it. Rape happens at home. Father raping daughters is more than stranger raping. We don't want to acknowledge it. We know, but we don't want to talk about it. The police use it only to say, but what can we do? It happens in the home. It doesn't happen on the it's a law and patient, but on the it doesn't happen on the street. Or some people say street lighting or uh, you know uh, public gardens access. And then the girls can't come out on the what public road you are talking about? She's into Aslam. Her exploitation happens from her family members, her uncles, cousins, fathers, adopted fathers, in the neighborhood by other boys. So be, what does being bold for change actually means? Bold personally, and bold taking a risk on behalf of someone else. Don't do much. You connect her to somebody who's doing. You guide her. We don't even want to. We are happy to listen to a lecture on Marjit, around Marjit. But that lecture does not change our life. It does not help us to reach out to someone else. And for me, first it was changing my own life. Then it was saving my children from a situation of violence. When the violence happened, it happened generation to generation. The mother accepts violence. The daughters also believe the same. And the son believes that this is a norm. And to challenge that, you have to challenge so many systems. 
It doesn't happen easily. And only because the women's movement was there to help me, I was the lucky one who was able to change my life. And the question is then, from here, this March 8 to next March 8, can we be bold enough to change one woman's life? Because we are the empowered women, the, we are the emboldened one, we understand all, we have the context. Can we take a small glitch to be of relevance to the society? Only then can we empower women. Only then can the society be changed. Otherwise, we will be in the same situation year after year. Celebrating, honoring women who have risked their life, but we don't want to do it. I think this is the only message I want to give you. That you don't have to go very far. You will find issues where you are living in your own area. Girls and boys will find issues. And whether you are able to take them up and how relevant you can be to